name is Vermin, my name is Vermin, Vermin, Vermin Supreme. And you can vote, and you can vote, and you can vote for me for president. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, my name is, my name is Vermin, Vermin Supreme. And you can <laughs> vote, and you can vote, and you can vote, vote, vote for me. Vote for Vermin Supreme. Oh. Let's hear for Vermin Supreme in the studio live on Two Hotheads. We've been waiting for a year. He's got the boot on. How can you DJ Slim is here. Dan Fishman's been calling in. Kamalita's here. Nikki Smith. All Star Cast. Here. Spencer. Wow, like everybody. We got Juggalos in here. Or something. Hey, are, are we on the internet now? Yeah, we're on. We're live. I don't think you ever left the internet. You're Vermin. supposed to talk into the microphone, Vermin. <laughs> This thing. Yeah, yeah that one. Thing. Stop looking at the shiny He's looking things. at all the cameras. There's like 15 cameras going around this car. Right, Everywhere you go. I'm going to focus down here now. This it's is a money. media moment. It's, it's like paparazzi. Right. Vermin put, paparazzi. Put on the headphones. As he well right. deserves. How do you put a head, yeah, around put the the headphones boot? around the boot? Can we get that around the boot? I don't know. He's going to need some assistance. We, we need, need a picture <laughs> of that. Good video. Everyone's got the video. Vermin's putting on the boot around his headphones. Oh, it, This ain't working. Slim, can you help him? Oh, Slim, oh, no, Slim, no, what no. do you got? Go- there he goes, whoa, there he wait, goes. Whoa, 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 you're screaming in my ears here now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, it's so loud. We yeah. still can't hear you. Get I next mean, you, to the mic. You get him here. next to the mic. Someone uh, do their job as an intern and get that mic next to Vermin. Okay. Can somebody adjust okay, can Vermin? Can we it this way? Can yeah, somebody, I don't care if it makes noise. Get yeah. Can Thanks. somebody right. adjust Vermin's headphones okay. so that they're not blaring All in right. his ear? Uh, I mean, loud. he did just come in with a uh, megaphone, right. so oh. I I don't know. I think yes. the the hearing must already oh, yeah. be damaged. We got too excited. We'll calm yes. down. We're gonna the, calm there down. There is an adjuster Chris on Lettuce. the headphones. No, no, that's Chris for Lettuce. all of us. Chris Bledis, are you there? Is this thing on? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we can, can hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> can you hear us? You're still really loud. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right. Oh, we have a phone call. Uh, oh, man. We, let's hold off on the phone call. Let's yeah, we we'll, a, we'll take a phone call in a second. We got to settle in We just got with Vermin. Here. Vermin, I got a lot of questions for you. All right. The first question is you promised all of us a pony if you're elected, right? That's absolutely correct, sir. I, I've been saying I'm voting for Gary Johnson, but you've, you're in the running. Gary Johnson, when I debated him... <laughs> Um, leaned towards agreement with the pony program yeah. for free ponies. But I want to ask for more. Like, I'm, I'm if you're going to be my dictator, well, you, I want more than a pony. Can I get some hemp? Can I get some free weed too? Uh, yeah. Well, you're well, going to of, you're gonna have to feed your pony, of course, aren't you, sir? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I mean, you will want to feed your pony those uh, delicious and nutritious hemp nuts, won't you? No. Yes, I are will. Are we talking about and my little ponies? Fodder. Uh, well, the actual nature of the ponies uh, under the Federal Pony Identification Program, a.k.a. Free Ponies for All American uh, <laughs> program, uh, actually, that's slightly indeterminate. We, we have a number of uh, focus groups uh, that are working on that, mostly composed of bronies. Of brown, uh, bronies. Ah. Uh, it is a... Pulling in, and pulling in that direction, uh, because there has been some speculation that some Americans may not actually even see their ponies in real life, and that they may be actually held ultimately in some sort of federal pony reserve, uh, <laughs> with the citizens <laughs> receiving some sort of federal uh, pony notes uh, in lieu of their actual pony. I, I believe there would be uh, an uproar uh, in America. I believe the citizens would not uh, take such a proposal that instead of the real thing that you were handed some sort of token or coin. Actually, I've been working on the coin. <laughs> don't tell anyone. Um, for just such an occasion. But the important thing to understand about the Universal Pony for All Americans program is that when universal pony ownership becomes a reality, that we have equity in our ponies because we own them. So we have an ownership stake in our ponies. Once we have an ownership stake, once we have equity, then we can start borrowing against it. Okay? That's, well, I, so I, that's, once we establish, firmly establish pony-based debt, then we can really get the bo- pony-based economy going. We can replace the Indenture Federal Reserve pony service? system, right? With, with the federal pony system, I like system, this. Yeah. This, is, this is something I'm, 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 I'm digging this. And ponies are an endless equity. resource. I mean, they, they, you know, they give us... They give us, uh, you know, transportation. You Indeed. know, Indeed. they can, uh, they can bring job creators. Good. It's a job multiplier. 
What happens if What happens video. if your pony dies, though, under your program? Well, because it, you will have to have your pony with you at all times uh, as it functions as a pony identification. Uh, you will have to carry it around, but you will have the pony cart, so you'll it will have wheels, so it won't be that hard. And that's only temporary uh, until the bureaucrats can process your claim for uh, a new living pony. <laughs> um, it, it should be a mi- <laughs> just, just a minor inconvenience that I'm sure that you would <laughs> right. say. Uh, Berman, it, I think we have, we have, we're getting a lot of phone calls. Do you mind answering some questions from our listeners? Well, I'm a little busy right now, and it's radio show. <laughs> we're going to take a call. Let's see who's on the line. Hello, sir. Or madam. Hello, madam, sir. Who? Will, hello, are you on the phone? Are you calling into our show? Hello. Yeah. What's your name, sir? My name's Jeff. Jeff, what you? Are you listening to Vermin Supreme live on the radio right now? Uh, yes, I am. Do you have a question? Well, I'm or listening comment? to two hotheads and a bunch of pony talk. Yeah. What do you think about the show? <laughs> Welcome to Pony Talk. We'll be right back. Uh, <laughs> It's a new NPR show, Pony Talk. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a little more concerned with question three and that whole business. Ah, ah yeah. Well, Tell we, us about that. What do you think? Uh, what, what, what are your... Uh, well, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a supporter. Of, um, uh, I've been a user of marijuana uh, much of my life, but I consider myself to use it medically um, the last uh, 20 years or so. I've had a lot of chronic pain. I know, Mike, I've heard you talk about back issues and stuff, and I have... Uh, Degenerative discs. Oh yeah, you know, ruptured discs, yep. fibromyalgia. Oh, and um, I'm definitely a supporter of medical. Tell me about fibro. I can't even say it. Fibro neural. That's a fibromyalgia. Yeah, that's a common. It, it, what is it? I, I don't know that I can adequately explain it in a nutshell, but it's it's uh it's it has to do with the connective issues. It has to do with uh, nerves Nerve and pain, chronic yeah. pain and how that uh, it can be like a self, you know. Uh, it can sort of uh, snowball the the pain and and uh, become difficult to control. And and it's so like uh, that affects every part of your life. And the opponents of question three right now are trying to say that all the people that are pres- uh, referred medical cannabis in other states for pain are bogus. Oh, I I can't begin to tell you how I posted a little thing I, uh, on YouTube about how annoyed I was about. You know, certain things, just a little blurb. I, I, I'm an amateur, but I, I got some rants to rant. I'm, I'm, I'm not that good at it. Yeah, yet, so. you're doing good today. I like, keep, you, rant away. Keep yeah, on ranting. Yeah, keep ranting. ranting and post it on our pages. The ranting our, wheel. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'll figure out how to do that. I, on you, our Facebook. I, 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 my, my YouTube name is Smokes a Lot of Potamus. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, that should be easy to remember. Uh, Look us up uh, on uh, Facebook. You can't forget that. Like, do you have my some Muppet of your, man, your test- you know? Do you have some big, of your testimony? Guy. Do you have some of your testimony up on on your YouTube channel? Uh, I'm just story. starting, but that's up there for now, and I got some other stuff to say. But I mean, the, the hypocrisy of the of the of the pharmaceutical companies is really ridiculous. Absolutely. I mean, every time you go to a new specialist, oh, don't get me started on nationalizing the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> <laughs> every time you go to a new specialist, they're like, you know, you want to try some Paxil, some Prozac, some, and I'm like, well, Cody. you know, I've done that route, and Anderson. I've been on that route. And, uh, How about some oxycontin? That's good for everyone. No, no. Well, no you know, to tell you that. the truth, I do take some some uh, some opiates because my back is so bad that yeah. I can't control it otherwise. Yep. But without medical marijuana, I think I would need a whole lot more. Yeah, and you only, I'm sure, like myself, like I only take time. I don't even. I'm not prescribed anything anymore. I used to be on naproxen, codeine, all those other things you're talking about. I don't take anything anymore. But if I do take something, it's a Tylenol, and it's or ibuprofen. It's only when. It's so bad that the medical weed doesn't work because it's not strong enough. Medicals, marijuana is a softer, softer substance. Oh, I agree, and it, it, it's just so much hypocrisy. I mean, they, you know, they. Luckily, I have a doctor. I have an appointment on. I'm hoping things pass. I have an appointment November eighth with my doctor, and she's already said she'll give me the note. And I, I, I would like to be the first guy in Massachusetts. You're number one in our book. Yes, yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> but you know if. They want you know, or, or, you know, they want to tell you to go get some steroid injections so you can get meningitis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And exactly. all of these are considered safe and, and effective. And meanwhile, you know, or they're worried about yeah. access to kids. You know, Google, Google, uh, uh, you know, settle uh, pharmaceutical settlements, and you're the first top three are you know 
prescribing antipsychotics. Exactly. So FDA yeah. approval. That's what they. That's what the no on question three wants. FDA approval. All those things are. Uh, yeah, one, but they don't want to let two, you study it. It's, two, it's just uh, there's just hypocrisy yeah. in every way you turn. Two last questions for you. Number one, um, do you have a question for Vermin Supreme? And number two, yes or no? Is there a counterculture? Is there um, a group of people here in Massachusetts who are not funded working on marijuana reform every day? Listen, I have to shout out to you and everybody else that I saw when I went to the Freedom Rally, which is the first time that I've been able to attend this year because I'm a single parent. And, I, you know, before that I always worked on Saturdays. And, uh, you know, because one guy gave some money, they want to focus on that. It's ridiculous. The, the disdain and the, the reporters' voices on Channel 5 was ridiculous. Exactly. And I like them. I like Liz Bruner and Kelly, Kelly Tuthill. But they need to uh, Do come research. down and see me. They they'll love me. I well, love them. They're using your image and not and not giving you a chance to, to voice anything. They showed our picture on there. Me and Slim for like five seconds. They we were all over it in their advertisement. Why? Because we look good and we're doing our job and we're fighting for you're it. Doing and, your job yeah. that they, they you're doing their job for them, and then they're twisting it and, and making it you know into good what they for want. us. We got Vermin Supreme in the studio. <laughs> Do you have any comments for Vermin today? I really don't. I don't know that much about him. Look but, him uh, up. Thank you, sir. Look him up. He Thank is you, the... Uh, he, Thank you for the, your we've consideration. Been, yeah, we've been waiting a year and a half to get him in He here. is running for yes, president. Sir. Campaigning and, every day uh, I would like to address uh, your issue of hypocrisy, and I am the only candidate who is fully comfortable with my own hypocrisy. Will you, will you consider voting <laughs> for Berman? I'm totally down with all my contradictions. I, I would t- consider it, but I've already cast my votes this year because I, I, I want to make sure that if I had a bad day that I didn't miss voting. Who did you vote for? What did You voted yes on question three, right? Uh, yes on three. Uh, I, I voted for Gary Johnson just... Yeah. To, to try to get the third party. Let's hear it for that. Let's hear it. Berman, is that okay? My worthy opponent. All right. <laughs> Berman's okay with when, it. When I debated uh, Gary Johnson at Paul Fest down in Tampa, uh, he was very amenable to most of my ideas. Um, although the major policy issue where we did differ was he did endorse uh, giving zombies the right to vote, which I, I don't necessarily agree with because I plan no, on enslaving them. No, I don't agree. Them. The dead should remember. You know, you, you never know what you're going to get when you mess with the dead. <laughs> Very true. I've, I've known a few dead heads in my time, indeed. Yes. Wow. But, uh, you know, as far as there being a counterculture, I hear it every Saturday now that I've started to expand my mind and look on YouTube a little more, and, I, and uh, I'd like to continue to follow it and... And yeah, be a part are, of it. Yeah. And, and, and you're like, a part of it. By exactly. calling in today, grassroots, you're putting out your own videos. That's what this is we're, who we're talking about. We're talking about you. And, and this is this is exactly, uh, you know, this is... Say your name again. Say your YouTube that. name and your name again, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you uh, soon. My name, is, my name is Jeff Levine, and uh, Massachusetts resident. And uh, on YouTube, I go by Smokes a Lot of Potamus. I only have one video presently, but... As I get better at ranting and less 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 boring and more animated, I'd like to put up more. Well, what I like you to do is, uh, if you know how to rip it or figure out how to rip it, we'll put this out on YouTube and you rip it and put it on your channel, so you have a second video now. This phone call, you kicked ass today, dude. Yes, thank you so good, much for good calling luck, in. Yeah. Good luck, Jeff. Good luck. Thank you. I'm gonna put up thank another you, video too, where I'm ranting about the pharmaceutical industry. That's well, good. Well, d- yeah, if you, you heard me you, last sir, week, that's what I was talking about. American. Yeah. Thank you. Right thanks on. All right, thanks a lot. I'm gonna. All right, you listen. Stay in touch via the uh, internet. All right. Yep, we're on the internet. We're on the radio. We're on two hotheads. We're activism. On happens. regular radio. Not one. Let's hear it for this place. But Let's hear two, it for this station. Two, two hotheads on one radio program. Yeah. I think we More have two. We got, we got a, here today, we, we, there's not just we two. We got two hotheads like and a boot A head. million hotheads in the <laughs> studio today. We haven't got to DJ Slemmy sitting in the back. We got some new talent that I don't even know about in here. We Yay. got so much going on. We still haven't gotten into Vermin Supreme. I know. And Dan and I, Fishman's I, trying to call in. 617 Four one two two. Great to be here. What Thank are our you, questions? <laughs> we, do we want to go to music or more questions of Vermin? What are we doing? Oh well, I think I'm. Oh, phone calls. I'm going to let Vermin. Uh, you just know, any cheap sleazy <laughs> substitute when you can have the real <laughs> the vermin cheap supreme. sleazy thing. I'm voting. Oh, <laughs> You're twisting my arm. I appreciate this. I, apple pie. He's and twisting mom. my arm today. <laughs> Vote. Am I going to do it? Supreme. Am I going to do what it? Terrible things could happen to your family. This is programming. While you sleep. This is mind control. It's later than you think. He's winning us over. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> are you are you you're voting Look for Jill early. Steiner? You oh start, are you going for God, Vermin? I don't know. I don't the know. This is, is so complicated. Near. Vote. For Vermin. What do you think, Carmelita? Right, we're going to be back. Am I going to vote for Vermin or Gary now? Oh, Carmelita. How are you doing, Carmelita? Hey. Oh, she's trying to win her vote, too. I know. Don't vote for Obama. Vote for Vermin. I'm leaning in Vermin's direction. Now, what's, what's the name All of your right. party, Vermin? I'm sorry, I Gary. Like, I well, like what came in? Once again, uh, I do represent the Free Pony Party of America. Okay. Yeah, I like and, this. But what's I'm that? also the vice presidential candidate on the Free Rent Party. Myself the and uh, damn high. Jimmy Price. McMillan, the Rent is Too Damn High Party. Uh, have that forged like an agreement party. where we are each other's vice presidential candidates. And it's been truly a wonderful, <laughs> inspiring thing to see <laughs> citizens and Americans uh, see their reactions when myself and Mr. McMillan appear together in public. It's a very beautiful thing. <laughs> it really is. And you should, I, w I would consider calling you the facial hair party because you have the absolute best mustachio beard situations going on in presidential history besides perhaps Roosevelt. I don't know. Garfield. Yeah, I guess you oh, know yeah. what? We have Ulysses had some pretty Smith. presidential hair. We've done so <laughs> yes, we want to bring the hair back into the White House. I agree. The I hair agree. house. We're going to make it the hair house. <laughs> we have a yeah, phone how call. would you redecorate the White House if you had a chance? I believe we would paint it every day just to create jobs for Americans. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love it. We got a phone call. Who's on the phone line? Who's calling in for Vermin Supreme? Hello. Hey, guys. This is me. Oh, is this Dan Fishman? This is Dan Fishman. How's it going? Good. You Hello, Dan Fishman. We're on the studio with a presidential candidate, Vermin Supreme. Are you familiar with him uh, running for Congress, you know, Dan Fishman? I, I have enjoyed what I've heard. The uh, idea of repainting the White House every day, that is an excellent idea. Thank yeah. you, sir. <laughs> I, I am the only candidate who proposes a full-on boondoggle consistent of a time travel research program, and I will go back in time and kill baby Hitler before he's even born. <laughs> Uh, with my bare so, hands. Obviously, I worry about the consequences of time travel paradox. Time space <laughs> continuum be damned. So what do you Forward. Think about the brony movement. Uh, oh, <laughs> wait, you're a brony? Are you coming out as a brony right here? Is that what you're saying? I am not coming out as a brony, okay, but okay. I want to know if he's the pony party, what he feels about the brony party. I, I believe it has been, uh, they are truly a very, very important voting block and constituent base of mine this election season. Uh, the outpouring of brony love has been truly one of the many blessings oh, this election year. Uh, much, yep. much of the, the fan art. I don't even know what you guys are talking the, about. The fan art awesome. the meme art. I know. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I feel like I've really tapped into a, a well, subculture that uh, I love is, it. Uh, is a pretty interesting thing. Oh, uh, yes. it's beautiful. You gotta get on the internet, my kid. I will. I'll be looking it up right now. Who's, who's, who's your favorite pony? I was going to say, the best thing you can find out about bronies, bronies are essentially men who love My Little Pony. Indeed. Uh, oh. and when I say love, they are over the top for love Indeed. for My Little Pony. <laughs> Indeed. That, that's, that, yeah, that's a and new voting And you seem block. to be over, over the top in, in your love for ponies. And so general. many subcultures in America to choose from. It's true. And I think you, you definitely have a lock on them. We have some juggalos in the studio, too, so maybe we can talk to them about their giving their support to your candidacy. If we can get all the subcultures... We could be well, the unite. monoculture. I'll tell you what, there's, there's one other thing I wanted to bring up real quick. Yes, Talk, Dan We're Fishman. talking about unions either, and I appreciate uh, Carmen's uh, point of view, but I want to say that there is a point of view that is a little bit different. I am pro-union, however, and in favor of right to work. And I say that in the context of having been a special education teacher and a member of a couple unions. Why would tell you... Tell us about that. Yeah, wh wh how do you get there? So... I feel that a union is a corporation that sells labor, and they absolutely have the right to sell labor, to negotiate for the best possible price, to do anything that they want to do, but not to engage in uncompetitive practices. And here's the problem in a uh, non-right-to-work state. With collective bargaining, a union can shut out a non-union member from getting a job. And that's the problem, is that if I'm a carpenter and I come in and I really want to work, and I know that there's a shop that's available and they're paying $25 an hour and I want to work, I ought to be able to go in and say, listen, I'm, I'm willing to work. I'm a qualified carpenter. I'm a journeyman, apprentice, master, whatever my level is. I'm willing to work for 20 bucks an hour because I need a job. Now, I recognize the fact that it does hurt the, way, uh, the other, labor, other laborers in terms of their ability to negotiate for the price, but they should not be able to shut me out because I'm an independent agent. 
Yeah, if I but, want to go in and negotiate for a fair wage for myself, I ought to be able to do that. And collective bargaining prevents that. Well, I think that that's throwing like, it's Which like right? certain instances you're throwing out the whole thing. And statistically, how many jobs have been saved by unions the versus trades. how many jobs you know, have been lost yeah. by unions? I, I mean, honestly, I think. I, 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 listen, I am completely pro-union. I hear There's you. a difference, though, between union I and know, collective bargaining. What about comps? Union is absolutely vital to the American worker, and they did a lot for workers. Yeah, but what about the point, Dan, that Carmelita makes that any state that goes to this new rule, the unions are gone. Like basically, but that's, you're that's, talking about you're basically talking about if this look at right to work state, and there are still unions there. Uh, that's not what Carmelita is presenting. The the unions in right to work states are minimal and weakened, and and that takes away collective bargaining power, Dan. Well, that, but that, you're exactly right. The collective bargaining is completely different from you can't have collective bargaining and right to work because collective bargaining means that the unions have the right, they have a legal right to lock everybody else out of the jobs. Say that only union workers can have the jobs. And that's what I disagree with. I think that absolutely a union is a wonderful thing. I have benefited from it. I was a member, as I said, I was both a teacher and I was a member of the International Meat Cutters Guild when I worked at Stop and Shop. Good. I got a 15 minute break because I was a member of the union. Yep. I'm grateful for what they did. But I don't think that they should be able to lock other people out of jobs. And I'm, I don't think that a right to work says that unions are away. I unions are completely gone. I don't, You're right. It does weaken them because it takes away their ability to lock out individuals. I, I think don't, that, for me, meet the new boss, it's the same as the old boss. The difference love, is whether or not you know, the people who are in charge of everything is going to be the state or the people who's in charge of everything are going to be the union bosses or the people who are going to be in charge of everything are you. There, what is your your issue? I mean, basically, you're saying it's okay to come in and undercut. And is is your issue because you don't want to be a union member because you don't want to pay dues? Is I, I mean, ba- there's a dues issue, but more than that, I don't want to have to bow fealty. I don't want to have to say yes. I accept that the union bosses are my bosses. Uh, I am an independent agent. Union, a union, every member of a union is the union. It's a democratic process. Every member is in solidarity, and it's a voting process. It's democratic. So I don't understand. But in collective bargaining, I don't understand I don't what you mean right by bosses. I don't my own salary. You have a, every member of that union agrees to what they're going to bring to the bargaining table as a, as a union, as a collective. Right, but- but to strike. take away my strike. rights and take strike. my own strike. power. Strike. Fight. Strike. Fight. Fight. Strike. 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 All, strike. all together now. I'm putting out a and call for a general strike. So ba- basically you're, <laughs> you're just Supreme. saying. You know, general strike now more than ever. <laughs> you're, you're more of a separatist in, in terms all of right. you want to you you wanna, wanna do your own bargain individually without regard to all others who are working within the same Realm and, and that's exactly right. Now, I absolutely <laughs> support the idea of t- the workers joining together and working together and working cooperatively and bargaining as a collective. I, the only thing I object to is the idea the that the union can block a non-union worker from getting a job. I hear you on that. Every other thing about the union movement, I am 100% I, behind. I agree with the National Labor Relations Board Act. I think that everything about it is right, except that they can block out an individual agent from getting a job. All right, Dan, thank right, you. That, this is a great, great conversation yeah. from two oh, strong people. I could guys go later. on and on. From thank two strong people. Taking thank it. you. Thank you. Point That's taken. Dan Fishman thank running for Congress. He obviously cares, as does Kamalita. That was uh He just lost you, my vote. Yeah. Uh-oh. 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 You are, Uh-oh. You have already been campaigning. Uh-oh. Supreme is wait, here wait, to gain it. Wait, you've been campaigning for John Tierney. Yes. Let's write him in for every position. Very true. How do you stand on this phone call? Well, I think everybody has the right to work for a union. <laughs> Thank Support. you. Strike, 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 strike. Once again, I'm putting out a call for a general strike here in America. People, I will keep you posted on the date. I haven't looked at my calendar. As soon as I look at my calendar, I will be letting America know when this general strike take place. This is the only way we, the workers, and those who would like to be workers, and those who work but don't even want to be workers, and those who work only because we have the bills to pay and stuff like that at various jobs that we really hate. But anyway, we're all workers, and we're all working, and we're all in it together because we are at the mercy of other people on top of us. So we must smash this hierarchy. We must join cooperatively and work with, and to screw the bosses. The hell with the bosses! Yeah. Die with the bosses! Die with the bosses! Yeah. I'm under Supreme. I'm under President.
in America. Yeah. And you should get behind me. General strike now more than ever. And we're going to take this country back, motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah. This time. Oh, Jesus, sorry. 20. Oh, no, no. This is Internet Radio. You can do whatever you can the fuck no, you 20, want. 20, 2016, okay. all right? 2016 starts now. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, two hot hands. We're blowing up the speakers in the studio. We're going to take a quick general strike uh, for some music. And we're going to come back and get Vermin Supreme's thoughts on all sorts of issues. We're going to do the lightning round with Vermin. Vermin Supreme 2012. Two hot hands. Yeah. <laughs> Where activism happens on unregularradio.com.